Welcome to our ACDC coaching webinar. I'm Caitlin Ziegler, Director at Grist and your MC. Joining me today is Senior Behaviour Analyst Kate Golby, who will be leading the discussion. And we also have a special guest, a real life master coach and leader who we're going to introduce you in just a short while. But first, a little bit about Grist. So at Grist, we develop and, and use microbehavioural conversation frameworks like the ACDC tactical leadership model to help leaders pinpoint what they could do differently and get insights into how they can achieve better outcomes from their conversations. Now, in our last few webinars, we've really had an in-depth look at the 20 microbehaviours that make up our ACDC tactical leadership model. ACDC is a really simple behavioural framework that gives structure to your leadership conversations while still allowing you to coach and talk in your own style. Agenda, current state, desired state and commitment represent the four phases of a coaching conversation, each with five microbehaviours. And there's also five delivery skills that round out the model. Now, you might be asking at this point what microbehaviours are. They are what they sound like. They're tiny behaviours. But crucially, they're behaviours that you can hear or see someone do or say. They're observable. They're accessible. 100% in control of the person demonstrating them and repeatable and predictive of outcome. Now, what I mean by predictive of outcome is that ACDC's microbehaviours are designed to target those 20 key moments that will ensure that your coaching conversations are effective in driving real behavioural change and tangible performance outcomes. Now, today, we're going to continue our journey into some common coaching problems and look at how ACDC can kind of mitigate them. So we're going to hear from our master coach, a master ACDC coach, and also dive into some of those micro behaviours that will help solve that common problem. We're going to calibrate on a real coaching conversation and there's going to be time for questions at the end. So please pop these in the chat as we go. So Kate, over to you. What's the coaching problem we're talking about today? Thanks, Caitlin. Today's coaching conundrum is a bit different to those that we've tackled on previous sessions. Um, today, we're, uh, previously we've focused on how a uh, coach needs to adapt to a problem point that may be present in a tricky team member. Uh, today's coaching conundrum, the all talk, no action problem, may be just as much due to a coach's approach to the coaching session and how they deal with their team members. So that makes today's insights particularly valuable for any of you coach of coaches. But don't worry, there's plenty of tips and insights in here for all types of coaches. The just keep what doing what you're doing method or you know, a pat on the back kind of approach with no plan or accountability means that behavioural change is less likely due to a lack of implementation of plans and actions. Now, to talk to this, let's meet our master coach, Jess Agdam. Now, Jess is an intuitive, people-centric leader with sky high emotional intelligence. With a degree in psychology, she's a big fan of continuous improvement and has spent many years leading, training and developing large groups of people. Jess's experience in Chris's behavioral analytics department, translating outputs to inputs and strategy to micro behaviors makes the solutions she creates to the clients relevant and impactful. In conjunction with her facilitation work with Grist, Jess works as a six seconds certified EQ practitioner, is a registered circle of security parenting facilitator and an accelerated coaching excellence enhanced practitioner. So she is quite the overachiever. <laughs> and Jess, welcome today. How are you going? Good, thank you. Thank you very much for that lovely introduction. It's good to be here. <laughs> Good pleasure. Thank you for coming along. Um, now, look, Jess, we often see coaches who are conducting regular coaching sessions with their team. They've got really good rhythms going. They're having, you know, great conversations. They're dynamic. They're all interacting with each other. They're productive. Yet nothing's really changing. The performance isn't improving. So in your experience, you know, what could be the cause of something like that? Yeah, it's, it's something that you see quite a lot when you observe coaching conversations, particularly when people are dealing with, you know, people who are humming along quite nicely. There's no, nothing obvious that they need to do differently. So the first thing I notice is that, or that's really key in the conversation, is that the leader really helps the participant or the coachee 
see what the behaviors that they are demonstrating how that's impacting their outcome because most of the time they just discuss the outcome and it'll be something along the lines of you're doing a really good job in xyz but they don't dig deep enough to help them uncover exactly what they're doing in order to do that really great job similarly when they talk about either when they want them to continue that behavior or perhaps tweak it slightly they again talk just about the outcome that they want them to achieve rather than talking about and linking it to the behaviors that will help them achieve that outcome Mm. okay so essentially we need a plan right yeah Yeah. so um I guess you could probably liken going into a coaching session or coming out of a coaching session without a plan is you know maybe like going to the supermarket without a shopping list you know you're in there you're kind of you're grabbing things off the shelf and then that night I'm stuck trying to cold a meal together with mushrooms and bread and mangoes and I don't know Oreos probably um so maybe if I focus on making a nutritious balanced meal then uh how do I make that plan yeah um don't invite me over for dinner Kate that sounds like a terrible meal but it sounds a lot like how I go to the shops so um in order to you know create that lasting change so once that has been identified the behaviors that are going to help improve the situation or the behaviors that you want someone to continue then you really want to put a plan of action in place by really clearly identifying first up what exactly what behavior do you want them to change or to continue to do so that's really key next up you want to make sure you identify the quantity and the date and so what we mean by that is that how often do you want them to demonstrate this behavior and when do you want them to demonstrate it by you know we're cre- trying to create some deliberate practice here so we want them to demonstrate it x amount of times by an exact date not this week next week or you know next time we catch up by next friday or by the 19th of this month whatever whatever it needs to be they also need a measure they need to be able to track themselves along the way. How how am I? Will I know if I'm successful? You know, if you think about um, uh, getting fitter as an example, if you didn't test or have some way of knowing if your fitness was improving, then you're not not you don't know if what you're doing is working, and you'll just continue doing it. And then lastly, as a leader, you want to check in to make sure that there's no support that they need or any support that they're looking for is probably a better way of saying it. Um, And most of the time they'll say no. And what that does, tied with all the other behaviours, is create some accountability, some ownership and something that's going to lead to some lasting change. Yeah, I love hearing about that. That sort of seems like a really nice plan there, uh, Jess, exactly what we've talked about. I know we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that goal setting, but uh, Kate, you've done a bit of research on this and how what Jess has just described there about goal setting can really drive that accountability piece. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I have. So the research I've found is actually, you know, right in line with what Jess just spoke about and it's about that fitness component, which is a really a good... um, approachable I guess example here so what these researchers found is that if if you're more likely to stick to a goal if you make a specific plan for when where and how you're going to perform this behavior so they found that people who filled out the sentence during the next week I will participate in at least 20 minutes of vigorous exercise on x day at this time in this place they were two to three times more likely to actually exercise compared to a control group who didn't make that specific plan for their future behaviour. These are sometimes called implementation intentions because they state when, where and how you intend to implement particular behaviour. In ACDC, we we just call it commitment and that's the final stage of our coaching framework. And just you'll note here, but there's nothing really about outcomes here. It's all about just making the plan to do the activity, to do the behaviour on a regular basis. So hoping that that regularity will in turn create that improvement in the outcome. So I'm going to share my screen again and we're going to have a look at those commitment behaviours from ACDC. have a look. Now our first behaviour is behaviour. So 
So setting a single behavioural goal that's small enough that a team member can put it into practice on the job right away creates manageable focus for the team member, greatly increasing the chances of success, like we saw in that example, just like Jess just spoke about. It also allows the coach to track the improvement more accurately. The behavioural goals like seeking to engage with clients rather than outcome-based goals like having happy clients minimise the chance of peripheral factors impacting the success of the goal. The goal success is in the hands of the team member. Next behaviour we have is quantity and date. So setting boundaries for the goal creates clarity and certainty for both team member and coach. I know a lot of this is really just it reiterating what Jess has spoken about. It's just giving you that extra bit of context and a little bit of the intent as to why we're looking at these particular behaviours. So making as many variables as concrete as possible, create a clear set of expectations, committing to and then achieving measurable goals within specified timeframes will improve team members' focus and learning. And it's all about the repetition and practice that builds the mastery. So just like we saw with the exercise example, doing this once isn't really going to make a difference. So you might do the the exercise um the visit to the gym like everybody knows you know buying a gym membership you go that first time you're really excited but you're only going to see results if you are continually going you're not going to be you know a master bench presser if you go to the gym just the first week so it's just creating that quantity that's regular and you know basically you can you can keep doing it it's, it's manageable next behavior we've got is measure so one of the most motivating things we can experience is of our progress, right? So this is why measure is really critical for effective goal setting. By measuring results, you get that insight or into whether or not you're making progress. So by setting a tracker or a recorder of how the behaviour is being displayed ensures the progress is being established. And the fourth behaviour is support. So just like Jess said, uh, behavioural change feels, it feels more achievable when someone's alongside you helping out. Coach doesn't have to explicitly mention they're along for the journey. The behavioural change, if they, sorry, if they don't say they're explicitly there along helping the team member along the way, the behaviour can really feel like, you know, a heavy load on the team member. And yes, so many team members might just say, no, nah, I'm okay. And that's fine. But still, that offer is really, really valuable. So the coach just needs to show their support. Okay, so now we've got that really clear in and out of those four behaviours. I want to jump into a little bit of a calibration. So what I'm going to do is play a recording for you. And this is a re-recording of the commitment section of, of a coaching conversation. So this is a real conversation that we've heard and we've just re-recorded it there to protect the participants' privacy. And so what I want you to listen for is each of those four behaviours. So grab a pen and paper there so you can make any notes that you need to. And then what we'll do is have a think about which ones we might have heard and listen to it again with the transcript. Here we go. Okay, so let's set that commitment for incorporating an agenda statement in your phone calls like we just role played. Sounds good. So how many calls do you have in a day? Oh, probably about 15. Great. And so how many of those do you think you'll be able to incorporate this behaviour on? Uh, pretty simple. I guess I'd say all of them. Perfect. Um, so how will I know that, what you've, you know, that you've done this and how you've gone? Um, I guess you can ask me about how it's going whenever you want. Of course. But is there a way you think you could keep track of how many times you've been able to attempt this behaviour and how it went? Hmm. Well... I guess I could keep a tally of my calls sometimes, you know, just on a piece of paper at my desk and put a cross or a tick next to the call if I did or didn't do it. Love that. And could you send that to me? Yeah, sure. I can manage that. Just at any time? Yeah, yeah, whenever. All right. Ah, fantastic. So is there anything you need from me? Um, no, probably all good. You sure? Anything you'd like me to do to help keep you accountable? Well, maybe you could remind me sometimes so I don't forget to keep that tally. 
yeah, absolutely, I can do that. And I'll check in with you as well and just to see how you're going with it. If you get stuck for any reason, just shoot me a message on Teams and we'll work through it together. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, great stuff. Okay, <clears throat> so I'll give you a little moment to have a think about which behaviour you might have heard there. Did you hear a behaviour there? Quantity and date, were they specified? Did the coach show any support? And did they discuss any measure or tracking? All right, let's jump in. And what we'll do this time is I'll flash up the transcript as we go through the recording and you'll be able to see exactly where those behaviours did or didn't occur. Here we go. Okay, so let's set that commitment for incorporating an agenda statement in your phone calls like we just role played. Sounds good. So how many calls do you have in a day? Oh, probably about 15. Great, and so how many of those do you think you'll be able to incorporate this behaviour on? Oh, pretty simple. I guess I'd say all of them. Perfect. Um, so how will I know that what you've you know that you've done this and how you've gone? Um, I guess you can ask me about how it's going whenever you want. Of course, but is there a way you think you could keep track of how many times you've been able to attempt this behaviour and how it went? Hmm. Well, I guess I could keep a tally of my calls sometimes. You know, just on a piece of paper at my desk and put a cross or a tick next to the call if I did or didn't do it. Love that. And could you send that to me? Yeah, sure. I can manage that. Just at any time? Yeah, yeah, whenever. All right. Ah, fantastic. So, is there anything you need from me? Um, no. Probably all good. You sure? Anything you'd like me to do to help keep you accountable? Well, maybe you could remind me sometimes so I don't forget to keep that tally. Yeah, absolutely. I can do that. And I'll check in with you as well and just to see how you're going with it. If you get stuck for any reason, just shoot me a message on Teams and we'll work through it together. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, great stuff. Fantastic. All right, how did you go? Did you pick up that, uh, I think it was the quantity and date, just wasn't quite specific enough. There, there wasn't a five times a day, something really concrete that the team member could actually prove and show evidence to their, to their coach that they were actually doing that behaviour. Every time is a bit uh, unrealistic as far as it being able to maintain that kind of activity for a behaviour that's new to the team member. So we like to see real concrete numbers that are achievable. Oh, you just unmute, Caitlin. Yes, sorry. I just <laughs> always, it's always one. <laughs> so you can check that off on your bingo. Um, uh, Kate, I was really interested as you were going through that and just looking at where those behaviours were placed, the support one in there, uh, I heard that a couple of times early on, anything that you need, it was a very broad statement and not really specific about the support the coach was going to give. Is that why we didn't pick that behaviour earlier? Yeah, so what we do, we do want to hear, I mean, look, really anything you need, um, let me know, uh, my emails here, all of that kind of stuff. So a, a way that the team member can actually go oh look they do want to help me it's like oh if there's anything you need just contact me um we want it to be you know a really confident show of support for, for yeah. that team member just to feel you know that reassurance you know that they, they aren't going to be bothering their coach you know with any questions yeah, I think that was a really nice pickup. And I like that the coach sort of went a little bit further with that because they were they were asking about how they could help with the accountability piece, but then they also went a bit deeper with that. This is what I'm going to do for you and check in. I, I think that was a really nice way of just really ensuring that the team member was not just ticking a box and moving on or that they weren't just ticking a box and moving on, I guess. that Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very nice. Um, now, I do have a question here and it's for Jess. Um, Jess, we've had a really nice, good look at those goal setting behaviours and heard a little bit from you about why they work. But I'd love to hear from you about your own experiences with this all talk, no action coach uh, coachee. Uh, and what did you do to really fulfil that or, or push that a little bit further, that conversation? Yeah, absolutely. I've got a couple examples that come to mind. Um, probably the um, the first one is um, I was observing and working with a coach who was coaching a high performing staff member. And it really was that, um, you know, pat on the back approach. And what 
we discussed afterwards was that the staff member wasn't really sure and didn't walk away with any sort of concrete understanding of what they were doing to be so high performing. So really it was a bit little, ended up being a little bit like roulette. So hoping that they were going to continue doing whatever the magic set of behaviors that they were doing were. And so what we talked about was helping that team member to uncover what that is that they're Mm. doing and then setting some commitments around maintaining that rather than just hoping for the best. And so in their future coaching sessions, they spend a little bit more time doing that. And you could really see the team member um, feel good about it as well and feel like they were being developed because it's a bit of a risk that you leave those high performing team members not feeling developed. So that's probably one of the Mm. first ones that comes to mind. In a similar vein, I remember watching a coaching session of a staff member who you could just tell they were itching for the next steps. They would be what I would call high will, high skill. They were really high performing um, and just giving them the pat on the back was not giving them the satisfaction that they needed to feel like they were growing and developing. And so what we put in place was a plan around how do they get that staff member ready for higher duties? What micro behaviours could that person do to help out other members of the team to step up in that more 2IC role. Um, and bo- in both of these examples, I think they really show s- supporting high performers as being really important in terms of ret- retaining staff, which we know is a big issue at the moment. It's really hard to find really good quality people. So we want to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to re- retain those high quality people. So in both instances, a pat on the back could have seen them walk out the door. So giving them a little bit more, helping them see what they're doing well or how they can take themselves to the next level made a big difference. Yeah, I love that you've um, pinpointed those high performers as the examples because I think we often focus on those of of the the people that have things that they need to change or performance issues that we need to address. And it's really easy as a coach, I imagine, to leave those high performers going, oh, they're okay, I don't need to worry about them. I don't need to sort of think too much about their coaching because they're already doing well. Whereas you're exactly right. Everyone wants that development piece. It's really key to retention, as we know. You know, we, we have to work harder as coaches to address those needs as well and how we can stretch those high performers and, and help them feel like they are still being developed in that, in that coaching session. It's fantastic. Thank you, Jess. I really appreciate those examples. Um, now, we've reached the point of our webinar where I'm going to talk a little bit about our uh, GIST platform, which is where you can learn ACDC online. So as a self-paced course uh, and a a platform that we offer to anyone out there who's interested in learning ACDC. Now, some of you will be very familiar with this, so feel free to jump off if you've seen the GIST already and uh, seen our platform or experienced our platform. But for those who haven't seen it before, here's a one-minute little summary about how you can learn the ACDC model online. So you can see on screen there, we've got a couple of screenshots from our GIST platform. Our GIST platform takes you through the ACDC coaching model and you learn all the phases and all the micro behaviours through short, sharp, really funny videos that are really cemented through anchoring activities and applying your skill in real life. So that's a crucial part of the course here is that it's not just about the learning, it's about getting out and doing it in real life coaching sessions. Now, the other key part to our platform is self-assessments and assessments generally on our coaching platform. And this is where it can get really interesting because you would have seen today that we really got into depth about what the different micro behaviours, those key moments in your coaching session that can make a real difference. With the GIST platform, you can also self-assess where you are at with your coaching behaviours and also get others to assess your coaching conversation as well. So just like we've done today, you can get others to jump on, you can calibrate, you can look at where you think you are, you can start to pinpoint which behaviours you actually don't really consistently demonstrate in a coaching conversation and then sort of think about, well, what does that mean that I'm missing or what does it mean my coachee is missing in my coaching session? So as you learn and assess, you can get a really clear picture about what you're doing consistently and then where there are areas of opportunity. So ACDC Online through our GIST platform is available for anyone who's interested. Now, if you are interested in finding more out more about the GIST and how your team can learn ACDC online, please head to our website. The address is on screen at the moment or get in contact. We've got some contact details there with David, our uh, GIST expert. Um, And uh, please do get in contact as well if you have any questions about the ACDC behaviours that you've seen today. We would love to hear from you. Now, 
I just want to close by saying thank you very much, as always, to our expert, Kate, our senior behaviour analyst, who always does such an amazing job of taking us through those behaviours. I also want to say, say a big thanks to Jess, our master ACDC coach. Uh, fantastic to hear your insights, Jess, and to really get into some of those real experiences that you've had with the All Talk No Action coachee. And lastly, I'd like to say thanks to you. Thank you to our audience and thanks for coming along and being part of our ACDC calibration. We will see you next month where we will tackle another common coaching problem. Thank you.